Jeff wins. I win. What a mess. So I ran the crowd cylinder out till I two blocked it. Pushed down at the hoist same time she popped loose. Ha! Ah. So now I gotta get a barrel over here and get that oil out of that cylinder. Nothing pouring out yet. That's a good sign. Alright, so I got some of my mess cleaned up. So I'm gonna have to come back in. Hook that hose up, but let's see what comes out of that barrel. See if I got enough oil to raise it. I put 15 more gallons in it. So total, I've put in 70 gallons. 70. Ah, okay, here we go. Boom on. Here we go. You know, that ain't bad looking oil. Not bad looking at all. Okay, here's what I was afraid of. I'm gonna have a problem here. I'm gonna break that off and then I'm really gonna be in trouble I did not anticipate that I should have used a straight end doggone it Jeez, what am I gonna do now that's just that is not gonna work that's gonna kink that off all right so got the boom up but it won't come down so I had to put that pipe on and the short uh, hose to the uh, valve that lets it down so I made a boo-boo you can see a puddle under there what happened is originally on that hose I had that 90 on there so when the boom came up that cylinder was tilting back it was going to try to kink the hose so I went and got the straight one accidentally cut into that and then I started raising it and it's spewing oil everywhere so I had to grind off a bunch of this to get the hose up into here and clamp it again anyway oil was very clean coming out the last little inch or so of the cylinder travel I saw a little white some clear water so Sometimes I'm saying, well, why do you even bother doing that? Well, four ounces of water can completely contaminate a system. So the more you get out, the better. So I'm going to see if I can get her to go again and see if I can get the boom down. It doesn't matter if it's been running its warm, but I guarantee you it won't start without ether. It won't. And I gotta hurry. hurry. Okay, baby. Let's go. Alright, you ready to find out whether this works or not? Turn the camera around here, wait for some. down no hose explosions yet boy that's gonna drink up a bunch of oil though okay we're on the ground let's see if we can get it to come up okay nothing now what out of oil what did I do god dang it I bet we're out of oil. Yeah, we still got some in there. What the crap? I don't know. Well, we got some leakage going on here somewhere. 
Saw something come out of there. Dirty bugger. Oh man. If it ain't one thing, it's 15. back in the shop so I don't know what's going on but all of a sudden the main pump you had two sections small section and the big one the big one does uh, the boom cylinder the crowd and the hoist I can still get the hoist to go down I can't get it to go up you have to floor it to get the boom to come up now or get the crowd to come in and out and it was like it just all of a sudden quit. So I'm going to have to read in the book and see where the relief is. I think it's in that big valve I put up there on the side. Screw it out and see if there's something stuck in it. And uh, go again, I guess. I don't know. It's like just, just when you think you got her whipped, you don't. So, I'll start going through the book, see if I can't figure out what possibly could be wrong. There's some places I can put some pressure gauges to see if I'm pumping any pressure out of the pump. But like I say, the small section's working fine. It's the big section. So it may be that there's some crap came out of all that stuff and got a got the relief valve or something stuck I don't I don't know how it maintains pressure and the book doesn't explain the hydraulics so I'll just have to go through it and see if I can't figure it out so it's a partial partial win today <laughs>
still going. What are you still doing here? So Jeff wins again. So the hoist wouldn't hardly go up. The, the crowd cylinder wouldn't hardly move. So what I traced it to, if I can find it here, right there, this is the big valve I took down with the, the floor jacks. Right here is a pressure relief. And I took it out, cleaned it up, and I got looking at some of the other relief valves. There's one just like it in the flow diverter valve. And going through the part numbers, see this one lists this O-ring here, which is common to this one, but they don't give you an exploded view. They just list them. And then there's one more here on the end of this. This one has a Teflon backup ring. So I took the very same cartridge out of the winch up there and it had an o-ring is all and the o-ring number is the very same number it calls out in this one so it calls it a relief valve and then it calls for these two o-rings and this 91709 o-ring is common on all of them so i stuck my finger up in there and i thought yeah that's got to have an o-ring on it how's that going to seal so i put an o-ring on it and now it works so I win. Winner's back. It's Blizzard. So I've been saving this special sticker from Aaron Johnson for a special occasion. I've been working on this old girl for two months and I just about got her whipped. I get a seal for the winch brake, get that back on. I got one more problem to diagnose. I can't get the winch to go up. I can get it to go down, but I can't get it to go up. So I've run out of gas. It's dark outside. I think I've had enough for today. But I'll talk to that guy from Cherry Picker tomorrow maybe and get it figured out. Sometimes you just have to tear into things to get them figured out. So, I, uh, gonna grease the shivs. I got the front plate back on. Oh, so, you know, I really appreciate some of the stuff you guys send me. Um, somebody sent me this. I should have wrote his name on. So if you see this, tell me your name in the comments. I'll take a Sharpie marker and put your name on it. But somebody sent me this box of springs and it came in dang handy today because when I took apart one of those check valves it had a small spring in it lightweight like this didn't need to be accurate it just needed to hold the check valve in place anyway it was broke so I got in the box and found one which is awesome so I appreciate the help. Anyway, cleaned up my tools, got the bench cleaned up. This is my winch brake. Okay, so I got good news and I got bad news. So I now know why the hoist will not go up. And so under this cover, there's brake drum. And then out here is a one-way clutch. And I talked to that guy at Cherry Picker Parts, and he said if it's been sitting a long time, that's probably froze up. So you can't get the cover off and work on any of that unless you take this counterweight off. So I'm gonna have to see if I can get these bolts to come undone, nuts. And uh, have to back it outside and either get the 336 or the service truck and lift that baby off so there's two holes on the side and one in the back and you'd have to get it rigged up correctly 
to lift it off even get it off set it down bring it back in the shop and see if I can get this cover off so I don't know what's happened in there it's just if it's rusted or gummed up but there it is that's what I got to do so that's what I got to do that's what I got to do What do you bet I'm going to have some that are just going to be miserable? Get out. Good Lord. That's... I'm going to need some help for this. That's just too much to hold up there. Holy cow. Oh, jeez, it's heavy. I start pounding. I can't hold it. You ready? Well, this is like 25, 600 foot pounds in the undo mode. That's what they claim. I, I'm going to take it outside anyway to get it off. So again, once it's off, I'll bring it back in here to work on it. But I guess I could try the earthquake and the one inch big hose to see if those will t if that'll touch it. If that takes it out, I'm gonna have to say this piece of shit. Always oh, something. That one came in uneasy. I thought, oh, piece of cake. Not. I thought, well, there's always one, but now I got three. Okay, so they're not nuts. They're bolts. We looked at the ends of them. I thought, oh, that's a nut. No, it ain't. So. According to the book, these are only supposed to be torqued to 250 foot-pounds. But, obviously this 2,000 foot-pound plus Ingersoll won't touch them. So, I'm going to get it outside and uh, raise the boom way up. Okay, so I tightened that one. And then one undo, and it came undone. So let's go give these babies a whirl. See if I can get them loose. Okay, the other ones I got undone by trying to tighten them and then loose them. But this just don't want to come. This gun is super awkward to hold. I don't like the trigger because you can tear your hands off. It needs a handle off the side and then trigger placement needs to be somewhere else if you ask me. 
my batteries and then I took a wire wheel down in that hole and uh, blew it out and then I lowered the crane down until it was flat again and I filled that hole full of muriatic acid and let it <coughs> oh geez I can smell it <laughs> that's just bad to breathe it anyway let it sit in there for a while so let's see what happens I doubt I doubt it's going to do it. We'll just give it a cross our fingers and hope my Mrs. Elite Earthworks sticker is good luck. Not doing nothing.
Okay, we'll let that cool off. See if she shrinks up a little bit. And give her a whirl. I don't care if it twists it off. I just want it gone. If I twisted it off, I could get it out where that's a straight through hole. I could drill down through the bolt and then torch it out or air arc it out. Success! I cut the washer off of it and then it came out. It just couldn't undo it with uh, rust in the threads and then the surface tension on the bolt. So now I gotta get the boom down and get the service truck hooked up to it, see if I can lift it off. Over there. Let me get up there and get me outside. Well, it's off. What do you think? Pretty gold, man. <laughs> Got it off anyway. Oh, that was scary, wasn't it? All right, Jeff wins. The camera SD card was full so you didn't get to see the whole thing it was rather scary but it's not as heavy as I thought the guy at cherry picker said 5,000 I'm not sure it was that heavy because cat says that hard nose is 4,000 and the truck handled it pretty well and this it handled it pretty well too so it's off and I'm not dead that's a good thing anyway I've about had enough for today absolute enough so tomorrow we'll see if we can get that one-way clutch part see if we can fix her Mr. Griffey's in the shop today because Mrs. Paydirt's babysitting my youngest son's little daughter and he's very jealous and when she's here he just doesn't stay in the house he wants to be with me feels like he's being left out so I brought some bones out here and he's ate them all now he's gonna be whining he wants more he's gonna go find the one he hid eat it Corgis are funny little dogs, very jealous. So, I gotta see if I can get that cover off. There's two bolts up there. I wasn't able to get out, especially the top one. I'm hoping that doesn't fight me all day to get those off. So let's go to work. So these are a 3 8 bolt with a 3 8 12 point head. And this one came out pretty good, but the one on the back side and the top side I couldn't get them out now that the counterweight's off the one on the back side I might be able to get out but I'm afraid that top one's really going to be rusted in there anyway so I appreciate all the suggestions on how to get the counterweight off what we did is I since I wasn't sure how much it weighed, that guy said 5,000 pounds. And I'm not sure if that's what it really weighs. The service truck handled it pretty well. 
but I was mostly concerned about those holes and the really sharp edge on them. So I doubled a 3 h chain in the back and then used two short ones in the side holes and we got it off but you know you can't you can't use a forklift and slide it under here because it's down against this and the other problem is, is because it's so heavy on the back as soon as you undo these bolts it wants to tip and flip off and this bracket right here is part of the swing brake and so you have about that much clearance between the counterweight and this so it has to come up just a little bit and then come off so the scary part was when we started undoing the bolts it was tipping we just weren't sure what it was going to do anyway i got it off it was quite scary but now that it's off i'll be able to rig it on the ground better <clears throat> and i didn't know what i was going to do here that's why i posted the video about the best way to get this off without getting killed because we generally wanted genuinely wanted to know how to do it and the idea about putting round stock in those holes is a good idea it's just those things just make me nervous because one of the things I've learned over my life is Iron doesn't give a shit about flesh and iron wins every time and if you remember that You're not gonna have your flesh torn off. So I Have a healthy respect for that kind of stuff Okay, one of the problems I got up here is this Cast housings broke really bad here and I think even if I can get this bolt out this is all going to fall apart anyway. I'll have to see if I can put it back together, weld it back together or something. Oh, look at that. It did it. Sweet. Now don't drop that on the floor, Jeff. Yeah, baby. All right. Whew. I wondered why there was wasps all over my shop floor crawling around, coming out of hibernation. Now I know. So, one-way clutch in there. So I got to take this off. Those are some long ones. Probably gonna have oil all over too. Oh, that's gonna make a mess. I hope not. No oil yet. Lindsay manual. Look, there we go. Okay. So I wonder if you take this whole thing out. Yeah, I suppose so. There we go. Yeah, see it'll Turn that way, but boy, it won't come back the other way. To me, that seems like the clutch is working. I don't really see any, I mean, as clean as it is in here, I don't see a problem. Do you see a problem? I don't see one. is out now what the hell do you do here? There we go. yeah I don't I don't see anything wrong with that clutch nothing 
That's not the problem. Not the problem. And say, there's nothing wrong with the one way clutch. Nothing. So I had to make some custom lock washers. I'd take some 3 8 and grind them down to the same size as this head because either I lost them or they weren't in there and they go in that bore so I just hooked this nut on there and clamped them down and went and ground them let's go see if they're gonna fit and I'll show you what I got going so we took that plate off and replace the seal in there to stop any leakage. So they gotta go fit in these bores. Yeah, it fits great, super duper. I thought, what am I going to do? I'm never going to find washers like that. Well, sure you can, Jeff. You got a drawer full of them. You just have to make them. That's what grinders are for, isn't it? We'll try it on level one. Think that'll be tight enough or do I need to go to a little DEFCON 2? I think that's probably tight enough. I think that's tight enough. Okay, that ain't the problem. Go the other way. Whoa! All right, shut her down. Was it even going the other way? Yep. So, what do you suppose is causing that? All right. As you saw, the motor turns freely through there in the down position, but will not move in the up. So I called the guy at Cherry Picker again. He goes, that don't make no sense. So we got talking about the anti-cavitation. He, he got out the schematics. He said, this is the up, and this has to open that check valve for it to work. So... Something's going on in here, so I've got to take the anti-cavitation valve back off and see what's going on. So, taking the counterweight and all that shit out was for nothing, other than I have installed a new seal, lip seal, on the output. So maybe it'll stop leaking oil. And we cleaned up the brakes. They didn't work too well, so we'll have nice clean brakes everything all nice and tidy and that's done won't have a brakes kind of important on a crane if you don't have a good brake somebody could die <laughs> so uh, i guess i'll put this brake and the rest of this stuff together and get the cover on then i'll get that anti-cavitation valve off so there's my brake shoes. They don't look that bad. The drum looks practically new. I think somebody's been into it not that long ago. Just judging from things in there, it had a, a fairly new seal. There was no such thing as these type seals with the green on them when they came from the factory. So yeah
it just just keeps forcing me to kick its ass and I'll kick your ass every time you just keep it up <laughs> all right so I got the backing plate on got one spring in the brake shoes so far I gotta get see if I can get the other one in there and not lose it so let's see I gotta be have them on you know use vice grips here needle nose vice grips to hang on to it so there's only two springs but there's four holes so I thought well I think both springs were on the inside but I wondered if that yeah, I'll just put them back the way it was how's that or will I there we go okay and then once the that hub and stuff's in there that'll hold that centered so when this comes back it should expand the shoes like that okay so next let's see I think I put the drum on next so this has got to go in to the seal in there like that all right and then your drum goes on and I want to minimize any risk of uh, leakage out of this so I don't know if it's gonna stay put there okay coming in so I'm going one way what the heck here there we go you just gotta get it straight to hole and you gotta go all the way through and get it lined up oh boy in the other one uh-huh yeah and well, then what do you do when it won't line up ow <laughs> oh that hurt oh that hurt jeez louise jeff that hurt that's gonna leave a mark okay these uh threads on these things are pretty bad looking I don't know where I'd find bolts like that I guess I'd go to town and see if I could find some need new bolts for sure all right we'll go to town get us some bolts and then I can finish assembling this and then go tear that stupid anti-cavitation valve off again Okay, I'm back from town already. What'd that take, a millisecond? <laughs> Boy, that sure goes in there terrible. I don't know why. That just goes in there terrible. So, there's the brake, and this big old spring hooks on the back of the cylinder, and that's going to be a real booger to get back on. I was just wondering how tight that would hold this. Yeah, it does. You get her pulled, she holds. Let go, and it's loose. All right, so this is my problem right here. And this right here is a check valve seat. And this valve goes in from the other side and there's a spring that pushes on it. So when the oil comes in here, it has to unseat this. Well, that I don't I don't know if I can show you from here or not. I don't know if, if I shine a light in there if you'll be able to see it. 
but the seat there is really thin walled and it's broke over there where the check valve contacts it and it's really rusty anyway it's collapsed so I think that's what's causing the problem um, because that thing has collapsed it probably should be inside of that gland right there if you can see that and it's not because it's collapsed so it's collapsed it inside that other hole and so I don't know how in the world I'm ever gonna get it out of there so I just sent an email to Marty at Cherry Picker Parts to see if this is still available or the whole valve now this is not a complicated seat I think any decent machinist could build this and then you just have to cut these holes in there like this but where it's collapsed it's going to be kind of hard to know what that is but I'm sure that's the, I, I'm just assuming that's the problem I don't know anyway it's kind of depressing you know you think you're just gonna get this fixed and it's just one damn thing after the next just drives me nuts you drive me nuts Jeff yeah do so I don't know what the deal is I really don't I don't know how far down in there that should be nothing Wish I could just find a used machine somewhere to buy the parts off of. That'd be a simple fix, wouldn't it? You're not going to believe what I did. When I put that stupid anti-cavitation valve together, I got the springs mixed up. And that's what damaged that seat. So cherry pickers got a used one they're sending me. I switched the springs around. I'm going to put it back together. Get her started. See if it works. I think it will, don't you? I think it'll. Let's see what kind of damage we can do. See how much oil we can dump all over. Okay, internal hoist. Look at that, it's going up, kid. We're going up. It's working, it's working. <laughs> Jeff wins. That spool was damaged, but 
not enough to keep it from working it's kind of funny i thought there for a minute wasn't going to go up and then i heard this clank so apparently that works good hopefully the stuff for that shows up today so oh and i got it glued up there where it was broke i got that glued some jb weld marine stuff that's going to take a while I wanted to kind of take it outside and get that steamed off, get the counterweight put back on, but that's going to be for that stuff to set up. I think it's going to be a few hours. Don't want to take it outside and get it cold and dicked up. Holy smokes. Smoky. Oh, Andy got a hold of me this morning. He's got my stuff ready. So I think tomorrow I'll go to, over to Napa, pick up my outrigger cylinder and my steering cylinder, and uh, installate those. I'm hoping today my seal for my brake shows up. Anyway, I could get the counterweight on. I'd really like that, before I put the counterweight on, I'd really, really like to put that brake cylinder back together. It would just make my life so much easier to have free and clear access to that thing. So, it is about, what time is it here? 11.14, so the PUS man should be showing up here for too long looks like i got a text a message so i was out um test chaining the counterweight and you can just put a chain through the holes on the side and it picks that thing up damn near perfect damn near perfect so that's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna I may double that chain if I got enough length. That'd be cool. Double it up. And then steam that off. I could get that put on today. Okay, kids. Um, so I'm at a standstill. If you guys want a video tomorrow, I need to go finish it. The thing works. Everything works. I just need to put the counterweight on. Like I said, I'm going to Napa tomorrow to get the hydraulic cylinders, so I'll have those on over the weekend. Uh, I'll be done with it. I got, it's just done. Thing, everything works. We're good to go. So, anyway, hope you've enjoyed the crane rebuild. It's been a giant pain in the ass for me. <laughs> uh... I never let anything whip me. I'm a bird dog. I just keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. So I finally got her done. Now it's time to put it to use. So hope you've enjoyed it. Let's move on to something else.